Thank you for coming. My name is Tom Calandra of uh, the Calandra Report, TomCalandra.com. I'm fairly, I used to be fairly well known. I started MarketWatch. It was a service that became the largest financial news service for individual investors. We sold it to Dow Jones in 2004 for $520 million. Got very lucky. Uh, live in California. I'm an American. We have a son at school in uh, Montreal. Uh, <laughs> don't ask how that happened. Uh, oh, no, our, our children went to the Lycée Francais in San Francisco. And then we have a daughter who's at school in San Diego. So anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, it's my pet peeve. And by the way, before I get into my pet peeve, which as you know, is shared dilution and how we get crushed and what a scummy, lousy business mining is, whether it's mining or exploration or development, let me tell you something about timing. So I'm, I'm on my way here from uh, San Francisco, my flight's way delayed, and you know I'm just sitting there getting shingles waiting because I have a three o'clock panel yesterday about the Yukon. I'm looking at the, air, the airport United Airlines magazine, and this is on the cover. Can everybody see that? It says Bogota, right? Colombia, Bogota. Talk about bad timing. Why is that bad timing? Because you know the FARC and the gorillas and stuff, they killed like a heck of a lot of people a couple days ago in Colombia. And you know, I used to live in Medellin, Colombia. I got my start there uh, uh, and uh, was going back until three years ago, was going back twice a year, most, mostly to the Antioquia uh, gold belt and stuff like that. So that's what you call bad timing, right? You know, you, you come visit Bogota where we blow up people in cars like the days of Pablo Escobar, right? Um, okay, so, but first, uh, before I get into my presentation, and, and I'm going to just point this out to you because I think it's very relevant, and that's the silver story. Okay, I'm here to tell you about how you can find hidden producers, whether it's Golden Predator or Extra Gold Resources, or reliable producers like Alamos Gold, and they're going to kind of insure you from that scummy, terrible dilution that we all suffer and have suffered since 2012. In fact relentlessly in this business, right? We get, I can't tell you how many sh stocks I own that, that, you know, I've gotten diluted by 60 to 80%. Before I get into that silver, uh, I'm not a huge silver investor. I was at a, a conference in Washington speaking on Thursday and Friday about the future of currency. And we talked about silver stackers. You know what a silver stacker is? Somebody who can't make that, doesn't want to pay $1,300 or a trillion rupees for an ounce of gold, so they buy, you know, 92% silver. Okay, silver stackers. You want, to see, you want to somehow graduate silver stackers to gold or platinum or palladium. And this is the silver chart sent by uh, a, a condition by one of my subscribers. I'm not a big believer in charts. But you will see that if this trend continues for commodities and cross your fingers, right, I'm not going to say anymore. No more forecasts for me, right? One of the regrets of my professional career is trying to forecast anything. That's a young person's game. It's an ego game. But if this commodities trend continues, whether the dollar stays strong or not, this is going to be terrific. And while, we're, while I'm talking, I'm just going to show you a little uh, video. You've probably seen it before. It's the Golden Predator video. Can you please? It's uh, only a, uh, that's an actual gold pour. I mean, that's powerful. I have a, a couple of other ones, one from Finland, but this is the one up in the Yukon. Isn't that pretty? I mean, I love that, you know? And I've been up there uh, to Brewery Creek and, uh, and Three Aces. Golden Predator, by the way, just had some news today. Uh, that's a gold pour. So when you can find a, uh, an explorer, a real explorer, that's somehow trying to avert dilution and avert share sales because the capital markets are broken, as we know, in Canada, totally broken when it comes to mining and, and other small caps. Look at that, that's 1, 000, uh, thir 13, uh, I'm, I have to look at my notes. That's a heck of a lot of gold. <laughs> anyway, and that's a doré, by the way, door from the French of the gold. So that's probably 88% gold. Here's where you can take down some notes because this is only a 20 minute presentation. Uh, these are some either producers or near term producers 
where hopefully we're going to see, let's say, reasonable costs, obviously Golden Predator from its bulk sampling at three aces. Um, Extra Golden Ghana is my favorite, it's tiny. And uh, Jimmy, the CEO, is just on his way to Ghana today again. Yves Clement, the VP of Exploration, was here yesterday. Um, if I take out my phone, I'll show you his picture, but Eve has been involved for 12 years. The extra gold one in Ghana, right, which is the longest standing democracy in Africa. I've been to that project four times now. They, they subcontract out all the parts of the alluvial gold on their property. So every year they sell, they net two to two and a half million dollars and they retire the shares. You, I guarantee you XTG is the ticker in, in Canada, in Toronto, on the main board. I guarantee you, you won't find the financing for that company in the last eight years. You know, they have 48 million shares outstanding. The stock's been going up every day now for like uh, six weeks, and they have a, an established resource. Nordic Gold, I'm, I'm a little mixed on. I want to see more proof in the pudding on their costs. Once again, Doré, Gold Pour, and then they send, send the dory to a smelter. But that's from existing rock that's been on the site. Victoria Gold, terrific story there. We were talking about it last night with the, um, the head of the uh, 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 Yukon government, Rai Palai, at Ranch Palai, and, uh, and some of his folks. Eagle, John McConnell's Eagle, which is probably five months away from being a real mine. I was there in June, is a tremendous property. Hopefully, they're going to have maybe $100 million of cash flow from that in 2019. Tremendous. In fact, that's, what, that's the one right there. That's Eagle. So hopefully, you guys know about Eagle. The map there is Corvus Gold in Nevada. Um, they have the Bullfrog and the Mother Load. These are all lesser known producers. Some of them aren't even, don't even want to be known as producers. Golden Predator today, you look at their, uh, their extension at Three Aces that they came out with, the press release this morning. They don't mention that they're making money from gold and retiring shares, but they are. Same thing with extra gold. Let me keep going on. By the way, oh, this is the one in Finland, uh, the gold pour from three weeks ago. Isn't that beautiful? And by the way, anybody who has any questions, feel free to interrupt me because I'm very interruptible. <laughs> uh, this this is a tremendous chart that we used actually at the Future of Currency conference the other day in Washington, D.C., which had, you know, people that were looking for alternative currencies. Like, for example, let me show you. I'm an investor, so I'll put my, uh, my sales cap on for a second. It's a private company called Valorum, right? They have the Aurum, their actual gold, and tradable. And in some place, uh, countries like the Cook Islands, it's actual currency. Um, beautiful. It's a private company. It's profitable. It's owned 20% by a huge... But this conference was all about alternative forms of currency, including the blockchain and crypto. I'm not a believer in crypto. I am a huge believer in the blockchain and its applications across 150 industries. And this is another example of Valorum. Okay. But, you know, if you look at that relative to U.S. equities, we're talking like cheap. You know, I'm finally, you know, I have about 750 or 775 subscribers, right? We, you know, we spend, they spend, I think it's $229 a year. I mean, I, people, you know, in, in the day when we had Market Watch, I had 10,000 subscribers paying $499 a year. Of course, I had, we had television and radio and stuff like that. But those 750 people, and I, I probably know 200 of them personally, have been with me, some of them since 1996, right? And I'll tell you something, I'm finally, after like 18 months, and I can't tell you how painful this industry is, I have people coming up to me in the past, past eight days, this gentleman here, saying, you know, I think the timing is right and I'm going to start investing and I'm going to finally go out and shell out money for a newsletter. I said, well, you know, $229 is not too expensive for a newsletter that you get twice a week and doesn't just have mining in it, but, you know, has good uh, Canadian and U.S. connections, and a couple of uh, German companies. Kirkland Lake, another great company. You look at charts of actual big or small producers, actual producers that use their cash flow wisely and have their 
have the thumb on the control when it comes to expenses, their, their, shares, their shares are going to outperform. I mean, look, okay, so this one came out uh, about a week ago. This, you know, they report their, their gold production. Of course, Kirkland Lake is huge. I don't own it, right? I tend to own smaller companies. But that's insurance, right? We, why do we own gold? By the way, does anybody want to answer that question? Why do we actually go out and own gold or mining companies? I mean, it's kind of a sick business. You know, I, I, I've made more money over the years with technology, genomic tools, Illumina, immunotherapy, IMV, uh, BioCris Pharmaceutical. I've made 20 times more money in those kinds of companies, in technology companies, Tencent Holdings in Hong Kong than I have in mining. So why do you think people own gold stocks and, and, and gold? Not just gold, by the way, but any commodity. Any? Yeah, it's, it's leverage, right? If you, hit, if you hit it right on the timing, bad timing. I've had bad timing, too. Uh, good timing. You could, you could make money quick, quickly and rapidly, OK? Uh, rapidly. But it, also, there's another thing, by the way. I, I, I had this great thought. You know, it's not enough for most of us, human condition, it's not enough for most of us to get rich. We want to be richer than the people that surround us. I mean, if everybody gets rich, that's what that's, that huge blue chip sell-off was all about, right, in the final three months of, uh, of 2018. It's because everybody was getting rich, right? Even the, my wife and I own blue chips that we inherited from Papa, um, uh, her dad. Papa was a beautiful guy. He was an accountant, but guess what? His last job, last 15 years of his life, he worked for Homestake Mining. Can you imagine that? Homestake Mining as the treasurer, the controller, the, uh, uh, an, account, an accountant. It was the longest continually traded New York Stock Exchange company based in San Francisco. They got bought by Barrick. And he used to say, Tom, this is Papa Chuck, he used to say, Tom, I've never owned an ounce of gold or silver in my life. And he, he didn't. The, the only gold or silver he wound up with was the, you know, the, the, the little silver thing and the gold thing that they gave him when he retired from the, gold stake, from the old home stake mine in uh, Montana. Okay? But the point is, he was investing in blue chips since the 50s. Right? Now you have all these cats, and, and we inherit, you know, my wife inherited those blue chips, Lockheed, IBM, PG&E, which thankfully we, we, we sold most of. <laughs> What a disaster. Oh my gosh. Wildfires, right? California. Um, but you know, everybody was making money the past 10 years. It can't happen. I mean, how, can, how does everybody get rich at the same time? It doesn't happen. That's why we invest in the things that we invest in, because we hope to get richer more rapidly than the last, than the person next to us, maybe even our brother or our sister or our next door neighbor, right? Or if you happen to be divorced, which I'm not. Uh, your ex-wife. So anyway, we have met the enemy and, and, and he is us. That actually refers to the US dollar, you know. Did, can you guess, the, you know, the whole dynamic with the dollar? By the way, we, are, we, we have to send Canadian dollars to Montreal like, like twice a year. I'm hoping this is the final semester. Please let him graduate. Please, please, please. But I mean, at least we get the advantage of the Canadian currency, right? You know, we were getting as much as $1.44 maybe 20 months ago. We're getting the last check we sent uh, uh, via a, a transfer service called XE.com. We got $1.34. $1.34 for every U.S. dollar. But you know what that does in commodities and anything that's denominated in U.S. dollars? That means that outside of the United States of America, here in Canada, you go out and you buy an ounce of gold or silver, or most things, you're paying record high amounts of money because of the strength of the dollar, okay? And yet everyone in America is saying, oh, Tom, what's the matter with that gold price? You know, it's getting killed. Yeah, because it's in dollars, but guess what? I take my gold when we go to France uh, in, in June to see the women play the World Cup uh, soccer. You know, that, that one ounce of gold is gonna be worth a lot of euros. And folks that are buying with their currencies, okay, right now, let's take the Indians, right, from India. They're, the Indians are very cost conscious, you know, they love gold, but they're kind of loath to pay a zillion rupees for an ounce of gold because it's at an all-time high. 
if, and I'm going to say if because I'm not going to predict anymore. Uh, I've, 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 run, I've run that scenario too many times. When they finally say, you know what, I'm throwing in the towel, I have to pay record prices for gold because I need to own more, the gold price is going to go nuts. I'm one of those $10,000 uh, an ounce guys, right? I am. $10,000 an ounce. You know, if the cryptos could do what they did, uh, and marijuana can do what it did, and some of these things, look at palladium. Palladium can do what it did, and zinc, and, and some of these other tremendous performers. Gold can go to $10,000 an ounce, believe me. And when that happens, it's going to be glorious. Still, we have met the enemy, and he is us, and not just the US dollar, but also just our skepticism about this, can I say again, scummy, scummy business of mining. Okay? You find the real people, the people who are worth following, the people with integrity, whether it's exploration, development, or production, you're going to win over time. But finding them, you know, it's a lot easier to start a, a mining company or a mining exploration company than it is, let's say, starting a company where we live in the tech ghetto, where our next door neighbors are literally Google, Cisco, Twitter, right? That's a lot harder. Oh, this is Endeavor, one of my uh, favorite silver companies, Brad Cook's uh, entity in Mexico. I've been down to that pro its properties a few times. Um, you know, it, it trades like crazy on the New York and the Toronto. It's got a lot of bang. Copy that one down. This is my guy, uh, Jimmy, who went to Ghana, you know, flew back to Ghana. He's from Ontario. And extra gold, that's uh, Cobra Creek. And Eve, Eve is the uh, French Canadian uh, geologist. Jimmy is a, a white boy, looks a little bit like a surfer with blonde hair. That's a little note he sent to me. Look at that. They sell, I, I was at one of their pours about three years ago. They, you know, they subcontract out the alluvial on their property. And by the way, by doing that, they help prevent the needless, senseless loss of life that you see. I go overseas all the time to some of these places. The needless, senseless loss of life when you have women and children and men doing this alluvial mining in huge amounts of people, right? So just so that they can make $10 and they're drowning, okay? Most Africans can't swim, by the way. Most Cambodians can't swim. Uh, uh, they take it then they ship it by helicopter, it's all environmentally regulated, and, it's a, and, 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 and they buy back shares, relentlessly, XTG. You look at it, you know, uh, I think you're gonna see that this is a company that even if they sell the resources that they have, five licensed concessions, for $30 an ounce, the stock is a triple. I think we're gonna see a transaction on this company in the next three months. So anyway, 48 million, 47 million, so it's like, a, and it trades maybe at 40 cents Canadian. As you can see, the stock is starting to get... Viv okay, thank you. Uh, so anyway, here are these, here are these companies' uh, tickers, right? I thought I would provide some tickers. I don't really know how I'm doing on time, so let me just look at my... Uh, oh, I have two minutes. Any questions? While I flash the tickers here. My favorites, once again, Extra Gold. Alamos Gold, big company seen a couple of their projects. It's a producer. Uh, Endeavor Silver, it's got a lot of zoom when prices are going up, but when prices are going down, they just came out with new um, production numbers. Victoria Gold, the Eagle Project in Golden Predator Mining. I own, so I own Golden Predator, Endeavor Silver, Extra Gold. But these are some interesting producers or companies that we don't really regard as producers that try to keep the tap, the thumb, on dilution. I like that. Come on. Yes, please. The question is, what is leverage, right? Especially if you have a, a faster pace of inflation. And I, I think it comes down to cost of, uh, you know, the cost of gold production. Um, and um, obviously, you know, you need a higher gold price. But uh, the leverage comes really not so much in the ownership of the, of the gold or the production of the gold, though. It comes with the equity, you know. So I think Folks like newsletter writers often talk about the leverage that you get with the equity behind a, um, a, 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 a producer, right? And if, if things are going well, you know, that equity as that chart show could show, could be 10x, 10x the performance of, of the actual gold price. Well, it depends on what, current, what their expenses are and which, which currency, right? You, you know, it's a great question. 
what, 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 how the balance sheet is affected. You know, I'm sure uh, we can talk a little bit more about it, but now I want to thank you very much.